We're uh, we're talking rogues today, and I, I I didn't have a dagger. So, rogues. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. My name is Garmin. This, of course, is the Storycraft Society, and this week we are going to be talking about rogues, specifically the rogues from 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons. So I am absolutely on record in saying that 5th edition of Dungeons & Dragons is my favorite role-playing system, role-playing game that's out there, and honestly, it's one of those things where I can very confidently say rogues are one of my favorite classes out of this system. I really enjoy a role play intensive version of my Dungeons and Dragons. Playing in combat and doing combat oriented things is less of my focus, but the thing that I will say is every once in a while I get a little bit of an itch that I just feel like mechanically a class doesn't work the way that I think that it should, or I see a loophole that gets exploited and I don't like it or whatever, and I wanna talk about it. So that's what we're going to be doing today. So with rogues, I haven't seen a whole lot of nitpicking this class up, and I don't actually have a lot of suggestions myself, but I do have three that I think are great changes to the class, and uh, without saying anything else, I figure I didn't turn on the main light. One second. hey -oh, I'm brighter now, <laughs> but uh, I have some ideas. We're gonna jump into it right now, and I am excited to talk about it. Rogues, let's jump in. All right, so number one is going to be a little bit of a roller coaster, a lot of moving pieces. Hmm. Number one is gonna be a little complicated, but buckle up, stick with me. I think I'm onto something here. So the first thing is going to be, I have always, with rogues, hated that they get expertise at first level. When I make a rogue character, I feel like I should be making a rogue who is learning the ropes and learning how to do things, much like the other classes are, and every one of my rogue PCs feels like they are already exceptional right out of the gate, and I don't like that. I don't feel like it feels earned. My level one is just always really good at sneaking or really good at picking pockets or if you go the more investigator route they are really good at investigating or inciting other people characters npcs um, and so i think that a solve for that is going to be another thing that i've kind of not understood is why classes like the fighter and the rogue get their archetype at third level and not at second like a ranger or a druid. Here's my proposal. We can take expertise and move it from first level to be what the rogue gets at third level, much like a bard, which I think as a system makes more sense. The bard goes out, he does a couple of levels, he learns what he's good at, and then becomes an expert in whatever he's doing. I think rogues could function exactly the same way. The next thing that I would do is bump the archetype of rogue, the third level gaining of that archetype and move that down to second level. That's gonna give you a level to figure out what your rogue's specialization is, but then you don't have to wait super late into the game to get your rogue feeling like the type of thief or assassin that they are going to eventually be. The final thing that I would do is I would take cunning action and I'd move that into the first level because again, a thing that makes a rogue a rogue is their ability to quickly hide, their ability to quickly get out of trouble, their ability to move around the battlefield very, very, very quickly. And so I think that that's something that a first level rogue should be able to do in a way that it doesn't make them feel overpowered more than any of the other classes, but what it makes them feel, in my opinion, is incredibly, incredibly, incredibly flavorful that typically the rogue character is just going to be more nimble. No matter what their stats say, they will function more nimbly on the battlefield at first level. So again, just a quick recap. At first level, rogues would get sneak attack, 
and cunning action. The next thing that they would get is at second level, they would gain their roguish archetype. Finally, at third level, they would gain their expertise, exactly how it already functions in the player's handbook, but they would have to wait until third level to become an expert at something. So for my second change, I would like to take a look at cunning action. So what does cunning action already allow us to do with our fifth edition rogues? It allows us to dash as a bonus action, to disengage as a bonus action, and to hide as a bonus action. And I absolutely love those three things. They fit the flavor of the rogue very, very well. And for me personally, I feel like they are usable in all kinds of situations. But I would like to add one more thing to that. The ability to focus and use that focus to allow you to gain some kind of advantage over your enemy in a way that other classes cannot. Part of what makes a rogue so dangerous is that mentally, intellectually, they can look out across the battlefield, they can look at the enemies and know where to place their hits in a way that will most effectively hurt and immobilize the bad guy that they're dealing with. So what I would suggest is another ability added into their cunning action that they can do as a bonus action. This could be called something along the lines of find weakness or take advantage of weakness, something like that, where what it would do is if the rogue did not dash on their turn, the next attack that that rogue performed, they would get advantage on the roll. Editor's note, while filming the glamour shots for this video, I realized that Tasha's actually takes care of the give yourself advantage thing. There's actually now a third level ability and that third level ability allows you to do everything that I said except it makes it a little bit simpler and it allows you just on the simplicity of if you move zero feet that turn, you can take aim as a bonus action. I personally love that. I think that that's great. The only change that I would make to that version of it is that I would allow you to do it as part of your cunning action at first level. So anyway, my mistake. Sorry, should have done my uh, fact checking on Tasha's before I filmed all this. All right, back to the video. Now I see this working two ways. One, it definitely works in combination with their sneak attack. So now the rogue, if they're willing to sacrifice their bonus action, they can get their sneak attack even when they don't have an ally directly next to the bad guy, right? But also, and this is what's really important to me, it gives this very cinematic style visual of the rogue who's dancing back and forth and then waits for the perfect moment to plunge their dagger in between two plates of armor. I I just, I think that this is something that the rogue is missing. Not missing. And it limits their mobility a lot. It also prevents them from being able to hide. So it's a different type of being a rogue. Lastly, number three, I'm going to talk about one of my biggest pet peeves with the rogue class, as well as a number one pet peeve of fifth edition in general for me. That is, I don't really enjoy the fact that natural ones and natural 20s don't mean anything, rules as written, when it comes to ability checks and also saving throws. Uh, but we're gonna focus on ability checks for right now. So with ability checks, you make a stealth check and you roll a natural one. That doesn't change anything other than your math is low. I like the idea that even the most heroic, epic adventurer can roll a natural one and still mess up. Or the most beginner, basic adventurer can roll a natural 20 and still succeed against all odds. That adds to the drama of the game. So this is going to tie directly into the rogue's ability called reliable talent. Reliable talent is something that the rogues get at higher levels. And what it does is it allows the rogues to take any skill that they are proficient in and it allows them to treat a roll of nine or lower on the d20 as a 10. Now I think that this is a great thing because what it almost does is completely takes out the fact that the rogue makes mistakes. They are so calculating and focused that they don't error. I still want that natural one. I still want my rogue to have fear when they roll a stealth check that maybe, just maybe, they will mess up even when it comes to sneaking past 
the main town guard. The way that I would fix reliable talent is I would add just one little addendum on there, treat a roll of nine or lower as a 10 on the d20, with a skill that you're proficient in, of course, but a natural one is still always a natural one, meaning that that character has the potential to mess up every once in a while. But with that said, that is my three tips, at least for right now, on how I would fix and dial in the fifth edition Rogue a little better. Definitely in the comments, let me know what you think of these. If you have any others of your own, I'd love to hear what you would do to mess and tweak the Rogue to make it play a little better for your style of play. But with that said, give this video a like if you enjoyed it. Leave me a comment down below. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. That is a great way to help out the channel. And the number one way that you can help out a small YouTube YouTube channel is to share this video with a person that you think would enjoy it. But that's it. That's it for this week. So until next week, I'll be seeing you and stay roguish out there.